I wanted to talk about high accuracy option trading next. And what I, what I have is a, f a few uh, general rules for selecting the strike price in the expiration month. My trade selection process is we use the trend following systems to identify uh, a stock Let's say, in this case, we're looking at an uptrending stock, and I'm, I want to buy a call option. So I use the trend following systems along with the trend confirmation to select the stock. Um, then once I decide, let's say I decide on Cree, I'm going to buy a call option. Well, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of choices on which call option you buy. So I use the option cycle strategy to help select the expiration month and the strike price. So historically, you know, the, this strategy has been, you know, very accurate historically. So let's go through the process of selecting the expiration month and the strike price. Now for the selecting the time length or the expiration, I like to use um, historical data, uh, historical price data that tells me the percentage of times a stock increased in between option expiration days. If I see a stock that on a three month option cycle is up 80% of the time, then that would be a, a high level of, of accuracy and I'd want to uh, use that time length. If I do the historical testing and the stock's only up 65 or 70 percent of the time in between option cycles, I wouldn't want to use that option cycle because that's not a high enough percentage. Now the other part of this is selecting the strike price and I'll show you some examples of that and um, I, I prefer to trade the in-the-money options that have more intrinsic value and less time value because if you buy an option at option expiration, they lose all time value. So when you buy an option, it's a wasting asset. So you want to have as much intrinsic value as you can when you buy an option. So that means an in-the-money option, buying an in-the-money option. Buying an in-the-money option has a much higher probability uh, of success than purchasing an out of the money option and we'll look at some examples here. So the goal of the option cycle strategy is to enable you to become a successful trader by helping you understand the time length and strike price selection process. Okay so the path to high accuracy option trading is uh, to use our trend following systems to select either a call or a put option depending on the trend and then we want to use historical price data to select the option time length. Then we want to purchase an in the money option with low time value. And uh, again, this is where the calculators come in handy because you can um, do these calculations before you take the trade. Now, if the price trend is up, then I look at bullish strategies such as uh, purchasing call options, call option spreads, and buy rates. And if the trade is the trend is down, then I look at bearish strategies such as put options or put option spreads. Now here's an example of historical price data for Apple. Uh, this is for 2007. The first line on this table has the stock price of Apple. The second row has the monthly change on option expiration day. So on option expiration day in February this year, 2007, Apple had a 4.2% decline in the price. On March option expiration, Apple had a 5.7% increase in price. This uh, second row shows us the monthly price change for Apple on option expiration day, which is the third Friday of the month. Then the third row shows us the price change 
for the three month cycle for Apple. And Apple is on uh, the April, July, October, and January cycle. So the, the three month change, January of 07, Apple had a 10% uh, price increase on option expiration day from uh, over the past three months. And then in April, option expiration, it had a 2.8% price increase for the previous three months. And then the fourth row is the six month price uh, change in the stock. And then the last row is the uh, change in the uh, leaps option. So now what I do is I look at 60 months of data on a monthly basis, 70% of the time, Apple stock closed up on option expiration day. With the three month cycle, it closed up 76% of the time. On a six month cycle, it closed up 91% of the time. And on a one year cycle, it closed up 100% of the time. So based on this data, uh, I probably wouldn't trade the, the monthly options. Now, right now, I'm just talking about buying a call option, okay? I, I want to separate this from the spreads and the buy rights because that's a different strategy. Right now, we're just talking about buying a call option on Apple. Which time length do you pick? So based on this data, I would probably go with the, uh, the three or the six month uh, option purchase because that has a higher percentage than um, the monthly. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't do the monthly options.